I'll tell you a story that my second patient, uh, who happens to be my stepfather, has MS. Uh, 15 years ago, we started using hyperbaric oxygen in his case, and we saw incredible changes. You know, at the time, I had no idea if it would work, why it would work. Getting somebody who's got some type of nerve damage, more oxygen, it seems to make sense to me. So we tried it. And in fact, it had amazing results. So in a time where, you know, he couldn't feel his feet, he was no longer walking stairs, he's losing his balance. We saw changes in all of that. The swelling in his feet went down, his balance improved, he started walking stairs again, he had more mental clarity. We saw amazing changes when using hyperbaric for my stepdad. And that's really what took me on the journey of trying to figure out, is this an appropriate therapy for folks with MS? And if so, why? And that's what got me a lot more involved in the research of hyperbaric oxygen, actually. Dr. Jason Saunders here. Today, we're going to talk about hyperbaric oxygen and MS, multiple sclerosis. So I want to be very clear about this. Hyperbaric oxygen is not a direct treatment for MS. Do we use hyperbaric with patients who have MS? Absolutely, yes. But like I said in the introduction part of these videos, it's very important that we understand the mechanism of action of hyperbaric. What is it that hyperbaric does when people go inside? What is the pathophysiology? What is the etiology? What is the cause of the disease itself? And when we understand the cause of the disease and the mechanism of the treatment, does it make sense that we apply this therapy for that person? What is the story behind MS? It's very complex. To try to simplify it for the purposes of this video, we have things like a breakdown of myelin, which means oxidation of myelin. Myelin happens to be fatty sheaths around our nerves. So we're getting oxidation of the myelin of our nervous system. We're getting, it's an autoimmune disease, so we're getting massive increases in inflammation. We're usually getting a down regulation of the mitochondria, so the cell signaling and the ATP production inside those damaged nerves starts to become reduced. We also get these patches in the central nervous system in the brain typically, and those patches or plaques are known to be inflammatory and cause further neurologic damage downstream. Knowing these pieces of the puzzle, does it make sense to try to use hyperbaric for these people? Number one, we have to be careful because it is a disease of oxidized fat or oxidized myelin. And so hyperbaric does have the tendency to increase oxidation. This is not the person that would just go into the chamber to the highest pressure possible, 100% oxygen for the longest period of time and very aggressive. This is the kind of person that we're going to start really gentle with and build it up over time because we want to stimulate oxidation in a safe way. If we stimulate oxidation in a safe way, we start increasing the body's ability to handle oxidation. It's that hormetic effect. And as we do that, we start to stimulate superoxide dismutase and glutathione and catalase, the chemicals inside our body that protect us from oxidation. As we expose this patient slowly to hyperbaric over time, we know that increasing their capacity to tolerate oxidation through hyperbaric actually helps them to handle the oxidation in their exterior environment as well. And so in this person, as we had lipid peroxidation, which is the breakdown of the fatty sheaths or even the plaques in the brain, what we start to get is we start to get a reduction in, in oxidation. So by increasing the body's intrinsic antioxidant system, we're able to improve the body's capacity to fight that uh, free radical damage, that oxidation, and upregulate its own uh, antioxidants. As we move through the process, we could also say that hyperbaric increases mitochondrial function. In all these areas of damaged nerves and brain tissue, as we upregulate mitochondrial function, we can upregulate ATP. As we do that, the cells become alive again, and they start to do their job and perform their functions at a much higher level. Along with that is the process of neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. And so when we have any type of damage to the neurological system of our body, healing the nerves, building new synapses, building new connections between neurons, and helping neurons heal, along with bringing the central nervous system stem cells into the area for improved healing, we have this whole neurogenic effect, this healing and recovery of nerve tissue that is possible through repetitive exposures to hyperbaric. We also, and we've discussed this numerous times, but hyperbaric is a great anti-inflammatory. So it has this capacity to reduce inflammatory cytokines, increase the body's anti-inflammatory cytokines, and really create balance in the inflammatory response inside our body. So virtually most folks with autoimmune diseases 
benefit from hyperbaric because of that immune system balancing, not because it's a treatment for autoimmunity, but because it has an effect in helping to keep the immune system more regulated, which leads to a lower level of inflammation in people who are chronically inflamed, especially those with autoimmunity. So if we look at this, we have this this therapy that's repetitively delivering higher levels of oxygen. And as a result, in this case, it's increasing mitochondrial function. It's increasing neurogenesis and the healing of the nervous system altogether. It's reducing lipid peroxidation, which the destruction of myelin is really the hallmark of what MS is. And hyperbaric, because it can reduce the oxidative effect, it can help slow or reduce the oxidation of the myelin. And it can help reduce lipid peroxidation across the whole body, meaning you know, your cell membranes are fats, your nuclear membranes where your DNA is, those are fatty, your uh, mitochondrial membranes are made out of fat. And so all these areas that are very sensitive to oxidation start to heal and reduce the damage that they're being exposed to from all of this excess oxidation. That's just a small summary. Like I said, the protocol for MS would be to start very slow and gentle and build that process up over time. You wanna make sure that the patient appears to be tolerating the therapy well. And after a few exposures at mild pressures, we can go up to higher pressures and then yet higher pressures even more. Somebody with MS is likely to be do 30 hours, 40 hours, 50 hours as an initial program to really get the changes that they're initially looking for. But MS, unlike TBI, which has a beginning and an end, in other words, there was an injury. Once you heal from that injury, you should be able to keep all of the benefits that you've ever gained. When we have something that's more autoimmune or degenerative over time, it's likely that we would do hyperbaric as an initial course of care to get a certain shift in their physiology and improvement in their physiology. But then it's also likely that that person should continue to do some amount of maintenance. For some people that could be once a week, for some people that could be twice a week, for some people that could be once a month. So it really varies. And there's a a thought process to go through when deciding what the maintenance package or program should look like. But it does make sense that because this condition is ongoing, if we get improvements that we're looking for from the initial course of care, we should be exploring what type of maintenance hyperbaric exposures could help this person now keep those benefits that they received initially. Or there are also people where we do those uh, blocks of treatment, we get a certain response, we give it a few weeks or even a few months, we do another block of treatment to get another big boost. And so there's a few different ways to consider what those follow-up protocols will look like. But step one is expose them slowly, build it up, get a nice big exposure over the course of at least two or three months, monitor what kind of changes they're going through as they're getting these hyperbaric exposures, and then recreate the next protocol based on what you're seeing from the initial program. I hope that helps. Uh, Is it appropriate to treat patients with MS using hyperbaric oxygen? Yes. But again, not because it's a treatment for the disease, but because of the mechanisms of action, the lipid peroxidation, the mitogenesis, the neurogenesis, the stem cell response, all those factors that hyperbaric helps lead to healing help patients with MS with some of the signs and symptoms associated with their condition. Hope that helps and uh, I look forward to talking to you next time.